All right, so today we are with our expert or our guru, <laughs> Phyllis Zimbler Miller, and we are going to talk about the basics of planning for college. And so first, Phyllis, why don't you tell us a little bit about how you got into this work? I actually fell in because I had two daughters, and when they were applying to college in junior year of high school, I learned that it was too late to start planning and that we had made mistakes that couldn't be rectified at that late date. And after they successfully got into the colleges of their choice, I realized that I had learned a lot from when I tried to get into Wharton to get an MBA and I had used the marketing campaign to get in successfully. So I started working with other students in coaching them. But again, I was so frustrated because they were starting too late. So I wrote this, really, I wrote this book, How to Succeed in High School and Prep for College. And the whole point is that before you start ninth grade, a student needs to work with his parents or her parents and think about where you want to go, not where you want to do the rest of your life. That's not what I mean. But think about the kinds of things that you need to make sure that your high school is probably not telling you. Yeah, absolutely. I couldn't agree more. That pretty similar story, actually, for us. My mom and I went through the same experience, sat down senior year, and I was like, uh, I have to know all of this information. <laughs> I would have been planning if I would have known. Like, why didn't anyone tell me? I was so frustrated. Uh, so, yeah, we, we say the same thing. Start as soon as you graduate eighth grade. You are a high school student, and you need to be thinking about college, even though it seems so far away. You know, you need to make sure you're on the right path, at least. You don't have to have everything figured out, but, you know, make sure you're on the right path, because if you're planning on playing sports in college at maybe a D1 school, that's a very different path than trying to go to an Ivy League, you know? So you kind of need to know where you're heading a little bit. So, exactly. Couldn't agree more. So what is, what would you say is like the biggest piece of advice that you give families, like the most important thing that you tell them? It's really two things. The first thing is to allow a student to follow his or her passion which means that when my 15-year-old said to me, I want to take my bat mitzvah money, an option, a book for a movie, I didn't say, you're 15 years old. I said, let me tell you how to do it. And that was the beginning of she's now a producer in Hollywood. Wow. So that's number one. Don't say to your kid, it's really too early to start following your passion. It's never too early. But then on the actual practical side, you need to find out right away what your high school's requirements are for graduation, and what your, your dream school's requirements. So just to tell you exactly, my, both my daughters, who are not math geniuses, thought that they would just take whatever ninth grade math was, you know, the step ahead because they really didn't like math. And we thought that, you know, if you finish a certain level by the time you're a junior year in high school, that it's fine, right? No, it's not <laughs> fine. Most good, whatever we want to find what good is, Colleges require four years of math, and they don't really care what level. They want you to take four years of math. Mm -hmm. So then, in both cases, they were at two different private schools. They were, I don't want to use you know negative word on, but they were really messed up because they hadn't just taken the easy ninth grade course and progressed. Mm -hmm. So it's very important that you make sure that you're not encouraging your students to put themselves ahead and only come up against a brick wall when it's time to apply to college. Yeah. That's great advice. I know a lot of parents get hung up on that, you know, the details and not knowing, and then you find out, and it's too late, and that's so frustrating. And so definitely starting that conversation is so important about what path you're on, what, what are the requirements. That's one thing, too, that we see a lot is, you know, students have never seen an application, whether it's a college application or scholarship application, until they're sitting down to fill one out. And it's like, that's too late. That's not the time Way to see an application. Late. <laughs> way too late yeah exactly and your high school won't tell you because they want you to take whatever three years of math they want you to take right mm -hmm. and they don't think about the individual where that individual wants to go to school those three years might not be enough and you know in public schools there are usually a lot of choices in private schools there are much less choices usually of how many math courses you can take in senior year mm -hmm. and in one case one daughter wasn't allowed to take one was considered too easy one was considered too difficult they didn't care that she needed the fourth year just like too bad you blew it yeah that's that's another thing and I'm sure you've seen this a lot um, parents put maybe parents and students put a, a little bit too much faith in the school 
and the counselor, and it's really not, most of the time it's not any fault of the school or the counselor. They're not out to get your student, you know, and they're not purposely, yeah. um, you know, they're not purposely not helping. It's just that they have so many other things that they're trying to get done and think about, and it's really difficult to give students that one-on-one -on -one advice that really students need. And so we're all about encouraging parents and students to take responsibility for that and make sure that they know that they're the ones that it's kind of it's up to them to do all of the planning and ask the questions and not assume that the counselor is going to tell you the right things to do through the process so and especially since usually schools don't have you meet with the counselor at most schools until ninth uh, excuse me 11th grade and then you're yep. that's years too late yep exactly and so what would you say, you know, what's the most effective way to prepare for the college application process? First of all, it's very lucky that nowadays you can literally go online and find out what the requirements are. And I would do a range of schools, but definitely, you know, the expression, you reach school. I mean, why not know what you need for those schools that you hope maybe you can apply to? Do not shoot yourself in the foot by aiming too low at the beginning. Really, figure out how you can set up your schedule so that you can have the most opportunities for when you apply. So that's really important. Yeah. And then, so. you know, start online documents. You start collecting your information, looking, all kinds of things, finding out, for example, your school may only require 10 hours of community service over four years, and top schools may want to see 40 hours. I mean, you need to know that now, not when you're a senior in high school. Yeah, absolutely. That planning piece and the tracking the tracking, I'm a big fan of that, you know, making sure that you're writing things down. I was just talking to a student yesterday and we were going through some information about what do I include in my resume and all of this. And I'm like, well, have you been tracking it? And they're like, no, <laughs> well, you're going to have a lot of hours involved in going back and trying to remember what you did. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so that's, that's just a tip that we'll just cover briefly at this one moment is I call it resume on the go and you start your resume right away. You update it, but Equally important is proof of your resume. So I know a student accepted to one of the UC schools, which you know UC schools are very hard to get it into in many cases, and she couldn't prove that she had taken something in ninth grade. So then she had to desperately figure out how to contact the teacher and get the teacher to write something. So you need to keep, I mean, even though we're an internet world, you need to keep paper proof yes. of whatever you put on your resume. Yes, absolutely. That's a great tip. That's we talk about that sometimes with, um, we have a scrapbook container, scrapbook paper holder is what we use for my brother to keep every document, every newspaper article, every certificate, every ribbon, everything went into that scrapbook paper box. You know, you have to have some kind of system for keeping the physical copies of things. So yeah, great tip. So what else? Is there any other tip that you think parents need to know as far as like the basics of preparing? I think the passion is, I, I wanted to say the passion is really important. I don't particularly believe so much in all, and this is not my expertise as much as yours, all around students. It's really showing you really care about something. Mm -hmm. And again, it's, you're not signing your, your name to a document, I'm going to care about this the rest of my life. It's just to show that you can make a commitment and care. So for example, on a resume, I think it's a mistake to do a resume by year so that you, let's say you're in band four years, so it says ninth grade band, 10th grade, 11th grade, 12th grade, because someone looking at your resume really quickly won't see that you committed to band four years. So that's why I'm a very big fan of a resume that shows uh, things grouped together so that mm -hmm. someone can skim it really quickly and find out, yes, you made a commitment. You didn't give up in junior year of high school when there were other more interesting things. You stayed with your band commitment, for example. Yeah, or the going got tough and you were like, oh, I'll just drop all of these things. Right, because you know? I, I can yeah. put that my college application I played in band for two years. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not that you shouldn't drop something if you absolutely hate it. That's right. not what I'm saying. But really, you need to show a stick to it. Because in college, frequently the going is going to get rough. And colleges want to know that you will keep going. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Great advice. Okay, well, that wraps it up. For this episode, that's a really great foundation, I think, for parents and students to figure out what they need to be doing to get started, the basics of planning for college and getting ready. So thank you, Phyllis, for joining us. I really appreciate it, and I'm sure we'll have you on again soon. Well, thank you for the opportunity. Of course. Ah.